You're listening to the Struck Podcast. I'm Dan Blewett. I'm Alan Hall. And here on Struck, we talk about everything aviation, aerospace engineering, and lightning protection. All right, Alan, we're back here for episode 12. What's going on? The dirty dozen of episodes. Here we go. Yep. (laughs) Yep. And then next one's the baker's dozen. So we can just keep using this dozens theme for at least another episode. So it's exciting. Yeah, but the baker... Baker's dozens related to donuts somehow. So when you say Baker's dozen, it always makes me think of food. <laughs> well, I think all of these like extra things are just stupid because you end up just getting charged for them. Like you think <laughs> they just, it, it's always reflected in the price. Like I learned this when I was a kid, <laughs> my dad's from Oklahoma and, and we'd be visiting, uh, you know, my grandparents and we'd be driving around and you'd see these fireworks stands and it's yeah. like you drive past one and it says, buy one get six free i'm like oh my god what a deal we need to stop and then the next one's like buy one get eight free i'm like this is even better (laughs) and it's like buy one get 10 free buy one get 12 free and i'm like mom like and and my grandma's like honey they just they just increase the price so you buy one but it's like 12 times more expensive than a normal what it would normally be i'm like oh well that seems deceptive and i was like i don't know 10 or something at the time but that's what I feel like. That's why I feel like the Baker's dozen. It's like you're not really giving me a thirteenth. Like, come on, you're building it. You just you're charging a dollar twenty five for a bagel instead of a dollar twenty. Like, just admit it. Just admit it. <laughs> but I have no. I also have no evidence to prove this. So maybe maybe I'm wrong here. I don't know. You know, you don't think the chef's taking a loss on that one, huh? Or the, or the Baker's taking a loss on the thirteenth? No, well, it's possible. Well, I mean, the cost of a bagel or or a donut is probably only a nickel, if that. It's pr- Ten it's cents. Probably less. Yeah. <laughs> So maybe they are. Maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, so in today's episode, we're going to talk a bunch about uh, lightning protection as it pertains to spacecraft and rockets, because that's where a lot of this stuff started. So obviously, uh, SpaceX's uh, site, their launch site was recently struck by lightning. Their craft itself was not down in Texas. So we're going to cover Mm -hmm. that. And then uh, obviously, the Apollo 12 was one of the big factors that got all lightning protection, a lot of uh, a lot of steam because that was a big deal and so they were like this needs to not happen again and then obviously the uh, the ac67 rocket that was hit and then malfunctioned and had a sad ending was another tall tale for today's episode on space first of all we should probably talk for just 30 seconds because we could probably get on a really big tangent space force how do you feel about the space force oh i think they have a cool logo uh- <laughs> I feel the exact opposite way. I'm, I'm <laughs> glad you said that because I think their logo is absolutely terrible. It's embarrassing, in fact. And I think they missed a huge opportunity to say, hey, we need a Space Force logo, America. Graphic designers, and there's some incredible artists in this country. What do you got? You got 30 days to send in your submissions for the Space Force logo. I think they really missed the boat doing that because it looks like whoever made that logo just basically plagiarized the Star Trek logo. And they're like, oh, navy blue with one color gray and some Times New Roman font. That sounds good. I mean, <laughs> am I wrong? Am I, am I wrong here? Uh, well, you I'm, know, I'm not. I, I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. I'm definitely not wrong. I, I, I don't. I don't know if you're. I wouldn't say that you're wrong. All right, but you know, how many new logos are you going to come up with that haven't already been done? We've been in the space business since the '50s. Early 60s, there's been a lot of logos. Mm-hmm. We could make progress yeah. on this one. We could have come up with yeah. something cool. Something cool. Uh, yeah. I, but, I don't know. I've seen a lot of aer- aerospace logos over in my time. They're all pretty much the same. You know, there's th- all, and- all the more reason to get outside the box. <laughs> I mean, proving my point here, <laughs> Alan. I, I suppose. I mean, how many times has NASA reverted back to an earlier logo? Doesn't Five, make it six does, times. Doesn't make it the right thing to do. Doesn't they make don't it the make right a thing. New- well, you know, if, if NASA, if there's any any space or well, uh, the European Space Organization has got a pretty cool logo. There's some really cool logos out there, but they they seem to recycle them every couple of years because it makes a really cool T-shirt. So <laughs> that's the whole point of the logo is for a T-shirt and hat. That's the, that's yeah, the I'm, only I'm not, point. I'm, right? not, I'm not I'm not buying that Space Force logo, but if there was like a cool logo, <laughs> maybe. Well, and uh, then yeah, I I think this is a lot like the book industry. So if you there's some of these publishers like human kinetics is one of them and human kinetics is a leader oh, in like yeah. strength training books and sports yeah, yeah. you know books they yeah. whoever is the graphic designer for that company they're still like living in the 70s because their books i mean the graph like so much has changed in graphic design i think a book cover is super important i think logoing and branding is super important in general for any company to be like you know like 
I was talking about wine the other day. Like I'm not a fan of wine. How many people buy wine because of the, the company's name and the and the label? So many people probably buy yeah. a bottle of wine. You have 50 mm. different bottles of wine that are all 11 11. Which one are you sure. going to pick? They're all going to describe it in a similar way with tiny text. So you're not really going to read. So it's coming down to mm. and I mean same thing's true with wooden baseball bats. Wooden baseball bats, there's a million you know, we've talked, had this conversation before. It all comes down to branding. And so I think... the color. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it can get you excited. If there was a cool Space Force logo, I would buy a Space Force t-shirt. I'd wear it out. Ironically, it'd be, it'd be funny. <laughs> You're but... going to make me buy you a Space Force t-shirt. You know that, right? <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll wear it. It'll be... Anytime I just want to be like... I just want to go out and... You know, I, sometimes I have to beat women off with a stick. I mean, you understand. So th that could just like help me, you know, just uh, have a normal night out without just being... Hounded. <laughs> that being harassed, huh? Yeah, okay. you know, it, it, it's so, tough. So it's tough. I'm doing you a favor. Look at it that way. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Let me go out in peace. Yeah. But I digress. So let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about SpaceX. So this is obviously yeah. nothing got destroyed, but this is still it seems like a, a, a big deal, right? Oh yeah, I mean, they took a they've been taking strikes near the facility, launch facility down in which essentially Brownville, Texas. So if you've never been down to Brownville, Texas, it's right on the border of Mexico. It's like the southernmost tip of Texas. So it's right in sort of hurricane territory, also thunderstorm territory, right mosquito, in there. Mosquito and, territory, and probably. Mosquitoes are probably the size of uh, Volkswagen. <laughs> yeah. Right, <laughs> pterodactyl. Yeah. Uh, but the the one thing about uh, that facility is they bought it because it's right on the. If you if you can imagine the United States, and everybody get out your globe in your head. You've you've got southern Texas, and then you kind of got Florida off to the right. And then Cuba is just south of Florida, and there's this alleyway between the two. So they bought that facility because they could launch off the southern tip of Texas and shoot between Florida and Cuba without, if their spacecraft were to somehow fall from the sky, you wouldn't land on a you land in the ocean, mm -hmm. uh, which is what you want to do, right? So, uh, so when they bought this land down in Texas, it's essentially on the beach. It'd be like being buying beachfront front property except you're buying it in texas and there really isn't top quality beachfront property right there in texas it's kind of swampish and sandy mm -hmm. so you want to build this huge facility on essentially a sandbar and they have trouble uh trying to build the facility because they have to bring in a lot of, of essentially dirt to make something when they've got this facility down there so they're, if you ever watch, if you're, when you watch, because they're, they're going to be doing some testing down there relatively soon. So when you watch the video of that, you realize there's not a lot of tall buildings out there. The rocket tends to be the tallest thing out there or close to it because you can't really build anything that tall. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Which, you know, as we've been talking about, least of these problems. So they've been taking these lightning strikes nearby. Now, you got rocket fuel, you got this rocket. And it was made out of metal, and you got lightning strikes. All that does not play well together, because you're in your worst case scenario, you somehow light off this rocket fuel, and all things go haywire. Mm -hmm. uh, so what? So what NASA does, and what most launch facilities do, is they build these towers around the facilities, really tall towers. So they're the tallest thing around. They build these tall towers, and then they hook them together with catenary wires which are essentially just wires so they hook them up these with these wires such that you've got this kind of grid electrical wire grid around the facility to capture lightning strikes and to direct them to ground uh you you know it's not the world's most complicated system but it takes building these really tall 400 500 foot towers and in florida that's not easy because again you're you're talking about sort of a sandbar. It's kind of where Cape Canaveral and the NASA launch facilities are. And then you got the same thing down in Texas where SpaceX is. So, you know, if you, you ever go to the beach stand, and you try to put an, an umbrella in the sand and make it stand up there. Like, you're yeah, in Maryland. It doesn't, yeah, right? it doesn't work well. Yeah. Well, right. you don't really go to Ocean City, Maryland. It's not like the best place. So, <laughs> not. I, but I've been Wait to the a beach, minute. yes. I've been to the beach, yes. Have you so where's the where's the good beaches in Maryland? Are there any good beaches in Maryland? Or you have to go to Delaware. Uh, yeah, Delaware. My my family wasn't a big beach family, um, but Delaware, like the Dewey Beach system, uh, that's probably not the right word, but Dewey Beach is like a beloved beach. Like the Delaware beaches are really nice, so a lot of people do go there. 
Um, people are close enough here where they'll go to the Outer Banks, which is in North Carolina. It's like maybe six hours south. Really? You don't go north um, of Jersey? The Jersey Shore? You don't go no, to the... No. Really? No, nah, people just oh go to Delaware. God. But Ocean oh, wow. City is just like not... I don't know. It's not like a the highest class place. That's not the right w- way to put it because we're not like... My family's not high class people. Like we're not... That's not the way I, I, I want to phrase it, but... Ocean City just like kind of got like physically dirty mm. when I when I was a kid. Just like you go to the beach, it's just like not super clean. It's just like not yeah. not a great experience. Yeah. So maybe it's changed. I, I hope it's changed, but I like I'm not a huge beach person, and we don't take family vacations now. That all the all the, the children are grown up, so kind of a moot point. So yeah. Well, if you if you ever go up to the Jersey Shore, and well, mean, then you you're too busy to... fist pumping to, to put anything in like your fists are up in the air. <laughs> who's gonna Who's gonna put your your beach and uh, your beach umbrella in the ground? You know, it's it's the Jersey Shore is a very popular area, and not and they're really being... they're really nice. Yeah, and they they vary yeah. widely too. They they do they they absolutely do. Uh, so one of the things about trying to build anything on the sand is it's just impossible, right? So you when you go out to the, sh- the shore there and you try to put your umbrella in any kind of stiff breeze and your umbrella's toppled over well think about that same sort of thing except now i'm gonna put a 400 or 500 foot tower in this sandy beach and they're gonna take hurricane winds that yeah, just that, <laughs> that, that doesn't seem great <laughs> it ever it is never going to stay and that's why when you go to the beach there's nothing very tall around it because it can't st- stabilize it in the ground so spacex got has got this problem now in texas where They've got this facility, you know, the great spot location-wise from just the engineering side, perfect spot. Problem is you can't really build anything big on it, and they didn't really realize that until they got on it. And now you really can't provide any lightning protection of the standard lightning protection to the facility. So as these lightning storms kind of come through their area, I'm not sure what they're doing because if I know they're trying to launch, have a launch out of Florida right now with one of the Falcon nines with the, ash, the two astronauts. Uh, that should be in the next couple of days. That facility is all lightning protected because lightning strikes in Florida are all the time. In Texas, not as much. And so, but you know, it only takes one. Yeah, it's just like any, any sort of lightning event. It only takes one to ruin your day. And just because you can't move out of the way at these facilities, you got to really protect the facility. So. Uh, I'm not sure what SpaceX is going to do down there as they start building. You know that that rocket, the the Starship, when it's at its maximum height, is bigger than the Saturn V. This rocket's huge, huge. Have you have you have you seen those pictures that they've been, Elon's been putting out about the size of that rocket when it's fully assembled? Holy smokes, mm-hmm. it's gigantic. It's a, tall, it's a tall drink of water, as they'd say in Texas. <laughs> right, it's going to be the tallest thing in miles. Right, so. Yeah. It's the lightning rod, right? There's your, there's your, if you want a lightning rod, you just built the most expensive, explosive lightning rod known to man. You've gone beyond the, the Saturn V. And we know from the Apollo launches, even like in the Apollo launches, like on Apollo 12, where uh, they didn't know a lot about lightning strikes on rockets, right? And they launched this rocket with astronauts in it going to the moon. And the thing is hit twice by lightning on the way off the ground. And it makes the... Uh, the, the sort of the capsule guidance system roll over and not know where it's at and the astronauts like we've lost power we've lost inertial guidance systems and we're and the rocket's still burning you're on that ride baby you ain't stopping that thing uh yeah. thank goodness that the rocket's internal navigation system didn't get affected by that it's just the stuff kind of towards the capsule end up to the top got affected by it but you know they learned a hard lesson in nasa back on the apollo 12 program and then they they had a similar thing happen. Uh, was it back in the '80s with the well, that rocket, that Air Force let's, rocket let's, launch? Let's talk a little more about the Apollo 12 because that that changed a lot of the climate for lightning protection, not just on spacecraft, but but for aircraft, oh, right? Changed everything. It absolutely changed everything, and it made everybody take a second look because they've had back so fill, in so, six, so fill everyone in for for those who don't know the story. So the Apollo 12 yeah. launches. And what happens? Boom, boom. Two lightning strikes, tumbles over. Every uh, All the instrumentation tumbles over. They actually make it to the, the astronauts, uh, you know, s- s- uh, s- nerves of steel. They don't get too flustered about it. They reset systems, and off they go to the moon. They land on the moon, and they come back. When they come back, uh, the engineers get, get on the spacecraft and start looking at what all the damage that had occurred. And there's a lot of damage to that spacecraft from that lightning strike. Now... 
they had known back in 63, 1963, that there was a crash in Maryland of an airplane taking a strike and exploding. The fuel tank caught fire, essentially, airplane crash. So we knew lightning strikes were dangerous. We knew that through World War II. We, on the Air Force, the United States Air Force knew that forever because they had taken a ton of lightning strikes to airplanes and they'd have lost the, lost the aircraft, had severe damage to the aircraft. So we knew all this time running up to Apollo, in the Apollo missions that we knew that lightning was an issue. And so they actually had some guidance about, hey, we can't launch if there's thunderstorms in the area. Well, what they didn't really consider was you're gonna put this gigantic metal object with a rocket plume on the back of it, and the rocket plume is conductive stuff. So you got this really tall metallic and conductive object running through the atmosphere. It can actually cause a lightning strike to occur where there otherwise wouldn't have been. And that's what happened on Apollo 12. It can actually cause it to happen twice. So in that one event, you know, and with the size of NASA, if you think about the era in which this happened, there's, there's really two things happen simultaneously in United States history, roughly. Um, you have, you know, well, JFK had been assassinated, so that had all happened, you know, Martin Luther King, uh, Bobby Kennedy, uh, you're in the Vietnam War, and you have the Apollo program. Uh, so all those things are kind of melded together and you just have this continual series of stuff. So there's the Apollo program was a big deal and to have a lightning strike that caused any, any of those astronauts to be put at risk or put the program at risk is going to get investigated. So after that happened, there was a huge effort by NASA to go figure out what's going on. And that's where you start seeing a lot of reports and analysis and studies and that, that drives not only in the rocket area, but on the aircraft side too. So NASA is involved in rocketry and it's also involved in aircraft. And so they, they, they kind of took both on at the same time and said, let's understand what's going on with lightning strikes in the atmosphere so we don't have problems going forward, or at least we can do something about it. And that's, that was the impetus to it all, right? Was sort of the Apollo 12 and just having the funds and the wherewithal and the engineering people available to go do this stuff. That's so where it all started. And so before that, they didn't really realize that aircraft were causing the lightning strikes. Is that correct? I Yeah, I think there was just an assumption. In fact, when I started doing the lightning, getting in the lightning business, this is 90s. That's a long time ago. Uh, the assumption was before, not much soon before that, that a lot of the lightning strikes are just sort of naturally occurring. You're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. And then with some of the NASA testing, one, they were flying a fighter airplane, an instrumented fighter airplane through lightning to try to record some data to see what was going on. And they realized they could do a lot of triggering of lightning strikes around Florida with the aircraft. And the fighter aircraft's not very big. So they were triggering these strikes. And so you start to see these numbers like, you know, 90% of strikes were aircraft initiated. I bet you that's up to 99% today. I think we're really getting, it used to be like, oh, it's like the majority are aircraft triggered and there's some random random ones that happen. I just, I, I'm getting shoved more and up in the 99 percentile case where the aircraft is initiating it. Hmm. That's, so that's an interesting idea. So then what was the main result for aircraft after the, the Apollo 12 stuff that happened? I uh, mean, they started putting you said everyone started going, yeah, like, we got to stop this. So what, mm -hmm. were, what were some of the biggest ones that happened in the immediate five, ten years after? Uh, they started putting out material, useful material for engineers to understand. So NASA had put out uh, some publications dealing with uh, aircraft and lightning strike, and they also did the same thing for the, the rocketry side. So NASA's involved in all this stuff, and, and the things you see in the aircraft, world or just an outgrowth of what NASA was essentially what NASA was doing uh, and then on the aircraft side as the aerospace company started getting more and more information about what's happening the FAA gets involved and NTSB get involved and they start making regulations and you and you start looking at not just things like aircraft structure but now you're looking at aircraft systems as you have more electronics coming in and this is back in the 70s so there's more electronics coming into the play of flight control systems and engine control systems so it starts to really grow out of that period so that that one you know, there's a really a couple of big lightning strikes one in 63 because of the fuel systems and all the fuel protection systems that happened and then the apollo 12 on pretty much everything else and then driving nasa to to do a lot of research it's amazing because you don't think about that today like in today's world we would never do that 
like we just don't have that sort of internal government focus program like when they have one challenger exploded we didn't rally together as a nation to go fix a lot of things like that it, it there was emphasis on it but it wasn't like back on the apollo program everything hmm. was still new so then let's talk about the ac67 rocket that that i guess crash isn't exactly the right term but Tell the story about this this rocket from the, I think it's from 1986. Yeah, so isn't it weird that back on the Apollo 12, which is, you know, and the whole Apollo program was sort of late 60s, early 70s, and then all the aircraft work that was done uh, in the 70s into the early 80s, and then we get into 1987, where we're doing a, a, a rocket launch, and it gets struck. Like we, at this point, we should know better. And it's it gets back to our little discussions about checklists. Like we know there's some activity in the area that we need to be aware of, electrical activity in the area we need to be aware of. And maybe now is not the right time to launch this thing. But they launch it anyway, because I think there's just some disconnect in the, the way information is passed up the chain. They get struck, it loses sort of its inertial guidance system and the, there's a, there's a person always sitting there with essentially a red button to detonate the rocket. So if it starts going off course, you don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. So they detonate and exploded it. And you're like, man, right? Uh, this is 87. The Challenger accident was in 86. What's going on? Uh, you got to wonder if it's just a, the internal workings of NASA at that point have just become so disconnected that they... Um, you know, they made another mistake. Uh, but boy, you know, you, you don't hear about the, you, you, the, the ones that stick in your head are the ones you see on television. Like this one I didn't remember seeing on television. So you don't read a lot about it either, which is the other weird thing. You don't read a lot about that post-mortem on that rocket launch because you tend to read post-mortems on rocket launches or aircraft crashes to help us get smarter as we go along are you saying so there was kind of, there was suppression of the media this was covered up maybe there was an alien on this rocket well uh maybe we're, not, send, we're maybe, right. maybe we're sending someone back home to a distant planet <laughs> so, yeah some defense department the, thing yeah you, well, know. You, gotta, you gotta remember what time this is so 87 is kind of ronald reagan george bush era right reagan was 80 to 88 or so. so this is in the Reagan administration. Or if and were you born during that time? Gosh, yeah. Dan, when were you I'm born? Eighty five. Yeah, this was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles territory. <laughs> yeah. So the if 80s. you remember back in that time, it was a very turbulent time. There's a lot going on government wise. This is the whole Soviet Union, United States, um, going back and forth, and Reagan's going to cause a nuclear war, and the Russian and the Soviets are after us. Blah blah blah. Uh, so once bad stuff happened, it just kind of, and because we didn't have Twitter, <laughs> if we had Twitter, we would know a lot more about it. You're right. But Twitter would have, Twitter would have fixed this whole situation. You know, yeah. you can, you can look down on Twitter. Now I'll look down on TikTok. Now I'm not backing off on TikTok, but Twitter, one thing about Twitter is when stuff happens, pretty much, you know it. So if there's a rocket launch that has gone bad, there's somebody tweeting about it. Yeah, right? I have I have come to use Twitter as like a, a news source and a trend trending. And it's funny, like a lot of these trending terms on Twitter, people like a lot of. <laughs> so you see something is trending, like you see yeah. Alan Alan Hall trending on Twitter, and you're like, trending. Oh God, is he dead? Is he? St and that's what like the first thing people. It's funny if you click on one of those things, <laughs> invariably one of the first comments is like a meme, and it's like, oh, when I saw you know, um, you know like. Emmett Smith was trending. I was so worried that my favorite running back was dead. It's like something like that. Like <laughs> that's like the first thing because people see these like, oh no, what's happened? Yeah. It's like it's like a anyway. So well, it's yeah. sort of like that, right? Right. If uh, the the Twitter feed does change, uh, well, okay. So let's let's go back to Apollo time. The big broadcaster at the time was Walter Cronkite, right? And what Walter Cronkite decided to put in his twenty minute news. Uh, stories that was that uh, was the news that was huh? it that was it and what you heard on local news was pretty much it so if they didn't cover it it didn't exist unless you read it in the newspaper somewhere and even then it got kind of sketchy because 
the, you know, they pick and choose what they want to throw into those things. So news outside your area, you kind of had national news and local news. And if it's not national news, you're never going to hear about it. And it, it obviously that's changed a lot as we have uh, more communication means. And I, I, I do think that I'll, I'll give you the I'll give you the similar example to this rocket launch thing and not knowing about it is very similar. Like I was sending you some stuff this week on Twitter about these crazy airplane things that people are doing, right? Like the two guys in the like squirrel suits, the flying squirrel mm-hmm. suits going down the high mountain and coming into the side and flying into the side of the airplane as it's running down this mountain. And the same I, thing. I didn't, I didn't see that. They actually hit an airplane or they were They closed? went inside of it. No, 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 no. So oh, I've seen they're, those they're, before. I've seen those well, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They right, try to well, catch racing, up to the airplane. Yeah, and they went inside of it. Like they just, they just kind of flew inside the open door. Boom. And yeah, it, yeah like, well, that's unnecessary. That's that's crazy, right? Well, and so was, many things you could say are unnecessary. Like, <laughs> but I that's mean, like that's a big a mo- that's slippery an slope right there. Well, yeah, I mean, they were trying all- to get into it. They wanted to go somewhere. They had like <laughs> they had to get to Taco Bell or something. They're hungry. Taco Bell is always open. Remember that go. Taco Bell never closes, even in Corona, it doesn't close. So I thought, okay, that's crazy, right? And I and I thought to myself, unless I had Twitter, I would not know that people are doing something stupid as that. Now. I understand the 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 adventure part of that. I get it. Okay, mm-hmm. but that there's an airplane there with people in it, and all it take is for something to go minor wrong, and three or four people are dead. For what? For a tweet? For a little video? I'm not sure that makes sense. Like you know, if you want to go kill yourself, I can't stop you. But if you're gonna take out an airplane and some other people, I'm not sure. I'm not think. I just don't think that's cool. And the same thing well, happened with that. Well, it's there's an increase sort of in there's an increase in deaths uh, because of Instagram as well. So I, really? I read I listened to this audio book called uh, No Filter, which is like the story of Instagram. Which yeah. I like it was interesting enough. But one of the uh, the chapters towards the end was about how people are like trying to do things for the gram, right? They're trying to get that glamorous photo in that unique place and be that influencer who gets like this, you know, photo in this waterfall that no one else has photographed. And people are like dying because of that. They're like trying to get the selfie and they stumble into like a, they fall down a cliff or stumble down a geyser or like whatever. <laughs> and there was a couple who are influencers and they're, they're they had this story. They were like hanging out of a tr- moving train. Like he's holding her, he's holding on by one arm and it was just like this okay. really da- dangerous thing and it caught the news because they're just like how dangerous it was i guess and yep. it ended up being great for business because they got all these like brand deals out of it because it was like this beautiful photo and blah, blah, blah. but people were like they got a lot of flack because people were like are you gonna die for a photo like hey idiot like that was super dangerous like you shouldn't have done that but that was also why they got so much you know the whole like no publicity is bad publicity thing that's kind of how it was but yeah but in today's world we got uh cgi and photoshop and yeah i'm actually not can... here right now this is just a, a cgi avatar of me <laughs> I'm, I'm asleep in another room yeah yeah well it, don't you think though that the which the if we that... had that technology we'd all be money right now for coronavirus we oh. just stay at home in our little avatar beds and just our avatars are out there just doing their thing doing their thing building, Im- building impervious to everything yeah whatever <laughs> that's what we need yeah. we need we need force fields and we need avatars avatars Th- then these things well, wouldn't matter well i just think that the lack of communication it was a big results in some of these things continuing it's not so much that people don't care it's that they just didn't know mm-hmm. and, and i think that's a big driver so i i, I get I, I was listening today to a, a, of all things a podcast complaining about uh how much information there is today and thinking, man, do you remember you going to a library and looking for stuff? Do you remember having to go ask a librarian to go check out a book from California that took two weeks to come in because you're doing a little research thing? That's those days are gone, man. Thank yeah. God they're gone. Right. But, but that does change the way we think about safety and the way we design things. And it doesn't take long for news to travel. And that's good. That's good. And so when this, when we were looking at this rocket launch thing, I said, man, Dan, have you ever seen about this rocket launch? And like, I have never seen it. No. The same thing, right? Because that's, that's the era in which it occurred. Is there's been a, and as we've been going back through the history, that's one of the things Dan's and I, Dan and I have been doing is going back to like Air Force history on, on lightning strikes to Air Force airplanes. Well, a lot of the publications they had at the time were just sort of Air Force 
Air Force specific, so you couldn't have yeah. access to them. Well, Flyer now they're in the national stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, and now they're in the National Archives, so you can actually go search for that stuff, and you go, wow. The Air Force had a lot of problems, and the Navy had a lot of problems with lightning strikes on airplanes. A lot. Uh, way more than we in the civilian world would ever allow. Uh, even today, we would be freaking out about the number of aircraft lost due to lightning strikes, and, and what they were recording on a yearly basis was just nuts. And hmm. Yeah, right? So I, I do think we get smarter as we go along, and, and this is, gets, kind of gets back to the SpaceX thing, right? Because now you're like, who's more connected in the world on Twitter or on YouTube than Elon Musk, right? That yeah, guy he, shoot, is, he shoots himself in the foot with tweets all the time. It's like his thing. All the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, I, I have no problem with, you know, I understand what's going on there, and I, and I, and I get all that, and that's totally cool. Uh, so it's when you see that, like, the SpaceX launch facility it really doesn't have any lightning protection at it, you're like, oh, okay. You know, it's we're now in a world where we... Could know, we should know better, and we should be doing something about it. Maybe they have, you know. And one of the things you and I were talking about was how do we protect that facility down in Texas? Well, uh, if we're going to put towers up, what are you going to do? That's a fantastic question uh, because there's you're talking about doing something that no one else has ever done before, but we do have tools in our little toolbox. We just don't bring them out very often. The one that I came up first was, well, why wouldn't you use sort of rocket trigger lightning? Down in Florida, they build these little, basically those Estes model rockets you used to get at the hobby store, if mm -hmm. there are hobby stores anymore. And they take a, basically a, a spool of copper wire behind it, and they put the wire onto the rocket, and they fire the rocket off, right? So the rocket shoots up into space. It's got this copper wire behind it. Again, it's like launching an Apollo 12 electrically. And it flies up into the sky when the electric field's strong enough in the sky, and bam, you, you get this lightning strike to ground so it takes all the charge in the cloud and it dumps it to ground so what you can do is like discharge the cloud before it gets to your facility who would i mean buying some estes rockets five dollars buying some spool of wire i mean the whole setup may be say it's five grand for the whole setup at least you'd have some level of lightning protection for the facility uh because the other the other way to do it which is a more technology cool era is to use lasers to trigger lightning strikes so you can actually turn the air into plasma using a laser that's what lasers do um and so you can put enough energy up in the air it actually makes the air conductive enough and charge in the cloud will follow that that laser all the way down to the earth very simple to do also right and because they're sort of secluded out in the middle of sort of the beach of texas there isn't like a lot of civilization around just gonna get bothered by the lasers there's probably not a lot of flights by there and obviously you can't just shoot lasers in the air when there's airplanes coming by but uh you maybe i'll do something like that something relatively simple to provide lightning protection that you wouldn't be able to do uh or wouldn't do because of where you are you you know don't, don't you think that elon would try to yeah i mean that seems makes yeah, it work I mean, yeah elon where yeah man let's let's do this let's get some lasers let's do this. and we're, we're maybe... drilling holes under vegas right we could just finish drilling we'll just see that with the, the the boring company just dr drove mm. the final uh couple of feet to make the hole under oh, did they? under vegas yeah <laughs> that, that, i guess this week where they had a little video of them boring through the last little wall there to connect up whatever that's going to be if we can maybe drill it, a tunnel come on yeah maybe right? we'll, maybe we should go to vegas and we can like do like the oceans 11 thing if there's a tunnel under vegas we can just like break in from underneath and just like <laughs> clean the place out it's drop just this, like that drop You're all this thinking... lightning protection stuff i mean let's yeah. just empty the vaults then we're good when i saw that video it's exactly what i thought like oh my gosh this is oceans 11. yeah who's who's in that tunnel right like literally right now trying to figure out where they drill above to get into now, mgm grand was it, was it oceans 11 or was it oceans 13 because that was one of the that's what i was wondering because it was Our, 11 was the first vegas one okay and 12 there in europe right they're in amsterdam and i think it's 13 where they do the drilling under the earth they, thing i don't remember i i liked I think I watched them all. It wasn't one they had to break back in or something to Vegas because the guy caught, he was like, his like, you know, I can't remember. Wasn't that, that Pacino? Name. This is, it wasn't Pacino. Pa it was Pacino's a, another 13. similar. Yeah. Oh, you're uh, thinking of the first one. You're thinking of Andy. Andy something. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. He was, but he was, so they steal from him in the first one, but then the second one, he like knows and he's like, I want all my money back. That's and the one in Europe. And they have to yes. steal the money to give it to him. Yeah. Okay. 
Yep, that's and then that's twelve. What's the, thir- what's the thirteen one? They just had to like break into Chuck E. Cheese or something, and no, no, no. One of the one Al Pacino's character has has uh, taken over a casino from one of their buddies, and mm. they went to rob him because he's a jerk. That's essentially what oh, it is. Weren't they like stealing those diamonds or something? Or yeah, they're stealing. Like yeah, they're just rob- robbing the blind. Right. This is where they had the okay. fight. Isn't this is the one where they have the fight, the the boxing match, and they're sh- everything starts shaking. Isn't it that one? Oh. That's right. Yeah, that one. I, I like those three movies in general. That third one was a little yeah. convoluted. I thought it's like all well, right. but either way, yeah. No, we should do that. Yeah. So yeah, we won't. No, no podcast next week. Alan and I will go be to busy. Vegas. We'll be busy. <laughs> yeah, we got to Amazon some ski masks and whatever. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> We're hitting our strip in our uh, uh, in our new uh, space defense t-shirts, right? Yeah. Yeah, Space Force for sure. Space yep. Force T-shirts, yeah. That's, oh my uh, gosh. That's that's the caper. Just like they'll never suspect. Two guys with Space Force shirts on could pull off such a heist. <laughs> but it won't even. But here's the here's the kicker. Here's the big twist. It won't even be us. We'll be asleep because it will be our avatars. It'll be the yep. avatar breaking in. Can you See? send my avatar to jail? There's no precedent for that yet. So. <laughs> You're always one step ahead of the law, Dan. Exact, one step exact, ahead exactly. of the law. I just turn, I just turn them off. It was a hologram the whole time. That's how, that's how that movie ends. So, oh, or, or they have, they have, they have me all like surrounded, and I'm like, don't come near me. I've got coronavirus. And they're like, all yeah. right, just, go, just go. It's fine. We don't. It's fine. Just go. Uh, we'll yeah, we'll turn, you, our, turn it, the other way. If you want to get away with something right now, you have the coronavirus. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Just don't come, don't come near me. But no, but that, that's, uh, it's an interesting thing that we're still dealing with lightning strike stuff today we obviously we talked about the russian aero aeroflot crash oh. and then here with with spacex you know fortunately none of their stuff was damaged but you know there's still it still just like isn't going away i think we need what we really need to do is exhume ben franklin and bring him back somehow <laughs> see what Can he thinks about ma- all this what would his consulting fee be per hour what would his hourly rate be if ben franklin was here today eighty thousand uh, eighty thousand dollars an hour Oh, oh, he'd be a big yeah. deal. He would be, yeah. <laughs> yeah he'd be, be a, a big, big deal. deal. Yeah. yeah, he'd be a big deal. Yeah, I just wonder what he think of Twitter. What would Ben Franklin do on Twitter? I have no idea. Like you go, what in the world, right? Going from the making all the doing the printing press thing for the American Revolution, and then you can just tell the whole world anything he wants to at any moment. I think he'd go be calling people out and like sarcastically trolling people. Like, oh yeah, that's gonna work. <laughs> Oh yeah, Elon, you think you're cool, but I invented the post office, right? <laughs> yeah. But he'd be like he'd be like the dorky person that doesn't know how to use him and he'll like sign his name after every tweet. He'd be like, Oh, you're a joke, Ben Franklin. It's like I know you're Ben Franklin. Franklin. It's you're at Ben Franklin. Like I know. Like learn how to use Twitter, Ben. Right. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that was a good one. All right. Well that'll do it for today's episode of Struck. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for listening and please leave a review and subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Check out the WeatherGuard Lightning Tech YouTube channel for video episodes, full interviews, and short clips from the show. And follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Our handle is at WG Lightning. Tune in next Tuesday for another great episode on aviation, aerospace engineering, and lightning protection.